All right, you fuckers. We're in the 13th day. I'm pretty sure uh, this event was two weeks. So 14 days. I'm feeling like we're near the end of this horrifying bullshit. So I'm making a promise here now. We ain't stopping the video until I'm done. That could be like... 40 minutes from now? They could be like three hours from now. Who fucking knows? I don't know. <laughs> I just I just want to go back to reality. I mean, this is reality, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, 13 day in the valley or the dome, whatever. Happened far too suddenly. Uh-oh. What do you mean? Oh. Komori-san, who seemed perfectly fine just a moment up before, crumbled limply out to the ground. Oh. For a moment, everyone who just turned their head at the sound was simply dumbfounded. Kumori. Oh, no. Kanade-senpai called out to her partner, but Kamori gave no response. Her body had begun to twitch convulsively on the ground. Oh, well. Kamori hadn't fainted from lightheadedness or am a a anemia. She was thrashing her body spasmatically as if she'd j been possessed by some malevolent spirit. It was uh, uh, at once bizarre and... Uh, terrifying to watch. Is she having a seizure right now? Canada, suspecting an epileptic seizure, yep, he forcibly pinned down her partner's body from above in an attempt to keep her from hurting herself. Yep, exactly. Koide Senpai and I jumped up to answer Kennedy's call. The, the others looked as I uh, looked on in shocked silence. We managed to move Komori-san onto a blanket, but the seizure continued. At Koide's an anxious command, I ran off to find my own partner. Oh no! I think this is the end for Komori, to be honest. So, like, she just straight up collapsed and then started spazzing around. わかんないよ。気がついたら地面に倒れてて魚みたいにピクンピクンって暴れ出して。変換じゃないの。小学生の頃こんな風に倒れたこう見たことあるよ。転換の発作にしては長すぎるわね。Yeah, I was going to say. I, I was thinking about that too. I was like, isn't this a little too long for this to be happening for like epilepsy? Kamori's breathing was rapid, her teeth chattered in her mouth, and her unfocused eyes swung randomly from left to right. Her ha hands and feet trembled strongly on a regular rhythm as if matching the beat of her heart. I don't even know what that means, or what that is, or what it entails. Oh, thank you, game. Toxoplasma is a common parasitic protozoan that spreads easily, so if you eat meat that's not properly cooked, there's a risk of infection. Well, fuck. Normally, that'd hardly cause, be cause for concern, but for those with weak, badly weakened immune systems, it could cause serious illness or even death. <laughs> どうするの。このまま見ているしかないの。犬はよく焼いてから食べたでしょ。考えにくいわね。小森さん、何か他に変わったものを食べたりしてなかった？She was giving most of what she ate to the dog anyway. Uh, for a moment of thought, Canada's mouth fell open with a little ah. そういえば、なんか花の芽を食べてた。you, got, you should have. She should have talked to fucking Kazuki about it first. Hana? Nano Hana? Jesus Christ. Namai wa wakara nai kedo. Kirei na pink iro no hajimete miru hana datta. Kore taberare masu ka ne te itte. Sono ba de nanko ga tsuman de tabete ta. I get it, but 
you don't just eat it on the spot. If you got someone who's fairly knowledgeable about this, talk to them first. I don't even know what Fox Club is. Kazuki laid a hand on Komori's trembling forehead. ね、熱があるわ。体内に侵入した病原菌を熱処理しようとしている証拠ね。水分をたっぷりと取らせて体を温かくしていっぱい汗をかかせるしかないわね。Okay, Kazuki would have told you if it was fine, you know, <clears throat> under these starvation conditions, it was inevitable that our immune systems would grow weak. Recently, drinking water raw had become a common practice, as no one wanted to waste time boiling it when they could be searching for food. And when foraging in the forest, many would pop even totally unfamiliar plants into their mouths, if they looked vaguely edible. By now, diseases so mild that a normal person probably wouldn't even notice them were potentially life-threatening to us. That was how weak we had grown. As we slowly carried Komori's quivering body into her tent, we could only grind our teeth at our powerlessness. Oh, lordy lord. We just left Komori to rest when Sakuma Senpai called out to us. I was, I was thinking about her because she was kind of going insane. Uh, oh, I had a bad feeling about this. Oh god. The moment we followed Sakuma into her tent, that pers uh, presentment was realized. What is she doing? Alright. We wrapped up in her sleeping bag, and Buki stared intently at a point on the tent's canopy, smiling slackly at nothing in particular as he spoke. Um, can we roll it back? Uh, the, it, the day popped up when the new day started, right? <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Kazuki. All the knowledge I needed. Even as she answered, Ibuki's eyes never turned toward us. The tone of her voice was vague, unfocused, almost like a sleepwalker conversing with her with her dream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything's falling apart now. As directed, we moved to leave the tent, but Ibuki immediately piped up. Oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, how happens about you just stay here for a little bit? God damn you, vitamin deficiencies. So. <laughs> はい、帰りたいな。うん、オッケー。まいったよ。今朝からずっとあの調子なんだ。いつもならすぐに元に戻るのに、今日はもうずっとあんな感じだ。オッケー。She'll <笑> どうすることもできません。ここには薬もなければ自己回復力を上げるだけの需要もないんです。このまま腐るに任せるしかないのか。I your brain, her brain isn't functioning anymore. It's done. Well, 
君が悪いんじゃないさ無理を言っているのは私だすまなかったね I feel like asking if anything can be done is an unreasonable or is you know いい Sagama Senpai's powerless attempt at a smile conveyed only resignation and defeat, made all the more pitiful by her swollen face. It wasn't the flushed swelling of a fever. Her face was drained of all color, her ghastly pale cheeks visible and ru uh, visibly rough and dry. She was blinking constantly throughout our conversation. It may have been difficult merely to keep her eyes open behind those bloated cheeks. Sagama san mo, eiyo shichou ga kao ni dete imasu. Lich literally written on her face. Like, <laughs> uh, exactly how she was supposed to be careful about starving when there was no damn food? Sagama seemed mature and refraining from yelling the obvious retort in Kazuki's face. But quite possibly, she simply no longer had the energy. Just how long would the situation last? Mentally, physically, in every way possible. We were being taxed beyond our capacity to endure. To endure. How long could we possibly hold it together under such circumstances? Well, give me something else. What else is going to go wrong right now, huh? You, Even Kazuki, our acknowledged authority on mental toughness, could no longer fully fight her fatigue. Yeah, you... Like this whole the last like couple days, you could kind of tell just a little bit, just from like very small things. Her youthfully framed face, burdened with that accumulated exhaustion, seemed to have aged somehow. Gently closing her eyes, Kazuki breathed a sigh of relief. Uh, um, not relief, a brief sigh. <laughs> no, there's no relief here. Then proceeded to depress me still further. <laughs> Yep, I figured as much. Mm. Sakurai had initially been recovering fairly well, but our unsanitary environment and inability to adequately disinfect her wound proved catastrophic. She was beginning to exhibit symptoms of sepsis. Sepsis. Oh, almost certainly caused by bacteria invading through her wound. She was now running a high fever with a consistently elevated heartbeat. She tripped over her own tongue when she tried to speak, and her limbs were routinely racked by brief, painful muscle spasms, as if her body was trying to contract. She needed antibiotics in soon. Hiroka-san was no better. In fact, she was worse, yep. Her debilitation had progressed to the point that she no longer showed any response to her voices. It all came down to inadequate treatment compounded by worsening malnutrition. The dog had been our only halfway decent meal in days. Otherwise, we were getting by on cooked snails, wild grasses, and our gruel, really nothing more than faintly colored water with a few grains of boiled rice floating at the bottom. Even minor injuries can heal on such a diet. On our first day stranded in this ravine, we ate fluffy white rice, steaming from the cooker. I couldn't get that memory out of my head. It's all we had. <laughs> Back then, we gobbled rice down without a second thought. Even had the nerve to complain about our coarse side dishes. Just remembering it made me want to scream at the pampered luxury of it all. We were so starved for sugar that tea made from skins of onions almost tasted sweet to our tongues. But then again, our initial yearning for sweets only lasted for the first carefree week or so. At some point, we'd begin to, begun to crave salt far more than sugar. Uh-huh. By now, we'd been reduced to licking the rust that formed on the wrecked frame of the bus after all the days of drain. Ugh. I had breached my absolute limit. When I crawled into bed at night, I hesitated to close my eyes, afraid I'd never open them again. You'll be fine, Amine, don't worry. But then again, maybe it would be better that way. If I let my eyelids fall shut, I would sink deeply into blissful oblivion. If my heart would then quietly stop beating... Wouldn't it be a blessing? I couldn't help but feel that a death without suffering would be a happier fate than to struggle on like this. But whenever I exposed those weak thoughts out loud, Kazuki would scold me. Uh-oh, here comes. Kazuki, keep us together! Kazuki whispered those words forcefully as if trying to convince herself they were true. 
It seemed too cruel to fire back. Then how long do we have to endure? How long before we can finally give up? I could find no other words, and silence settled on the tent. Oh no, 14. Oh, here's, here, here's when everything's gonna go down. I'm, uh, unless, uh, unless it lasts long. I, I remember them saying it lasted two, two weeks. I don't know if it goes, like, a little bit longer than that, but I think this might be the day that shit goes down, and I'm waiting, and I, I want to see if my theories are right <laughs> as much as I don't want them to be. <clears throat> 14th day in the valley. When morning came, Kazuki struck the bottom of a pan at our normal wake-up time, but there were no signs of activity from within the tent, so, Lord. It wasn't that the others weren't awake, they simply couldn't get up. Recently, just standing upright was exhausting. It wasn't rare for someone to spend the majority of the day lying in their sleeping bag. I get the feeling we got a couple of uh, passed away people this morning, too. Just throwing that out there. Even then, we when we attempted to move, it would often prove impossible. Every time we tried to stand, our joints would scream in pain. If we pulled ourselves upright by clinging to a tree or a rock, our knees would be shaking so hard that we could barely walk. Oh no. Oh lord. Even so, as the sun rose and warmed the... Anyway, I mean, she's still there. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Even so, as the sun rose and warmed the valley, uh, those who could still move come crawling out of their, t slowly out of their tents. Basking in the rays of the morning sun light, uh, we resembled nothing so much as a lethargic pack of iguanas escaped from the Galapagos Islands. For some reason, it felt as though the mere touch of the sun on our skin gave us a small boost of energy. Sweet. Of course, it was mostly an illusion. Oh, our stomachs were still empty. But either way, moving around aimlessly would be a waste of calories, so we all found our seats in the sun and kept still. It was tempting to just flop down on the spot and close your eyes. But the cold stone beneath us stole body heat quickly, so lying down would burn a surprising amount of energy. Staying awake and sitting quietly was the best way to conserve our strength, what little we had left. So we sat on the ground, hard ground as if rooted to the spot, unable to do anything but silently agonize over our individual's fates. I've got to do something. How can I survive this? The thought churned endlessly around in our, our heads. But merely focusing on nourishment starved, uh, uh, focusing our nourishment starved brains on a question took all too much effort. Actually, producing an answer was beyond our power. And yet, even now, we were still human beings. We still hadn't broken the absolute minimum rules. Uh, Kazuki? Uh. At my side, Kazuki murmured those words to herself slowly and deliberately, as if confirming that she was still firmly conscious, still able to speak. I followed her gaze around the area. Everyone was staring goggle-eyed into the distance, their pale, slack faces shining greasily in the morning sun. There was something dangerous in the air. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Given a small push in the wrong direction, it felt as though even our humanity would instantly crumble underneath us. It's coming! Yuji. <gasps> oh, she's thinking of... Of course she's thinking about her brother. Oh, I'm telling Kazami oh. Yuji. Occupation student number two. そう。それが私の弟の名前。会ってみたいな。生きて帰ることができたら紹介してあげるわ。きっと気に入るはずよ。The scene hits me so hard for like no reason. 楽しみだな。きっとだよ。Oh my god. Oh. That afternoon, Mr. Ochi, what the fuck, returned from his escape attempt to rejoin us at our gradual passive slide towards death. Oh, so he just fucking was like, oh, I'm coming back. He was completely emancipated. Oh. 
Did I say emancipated? I meant emaciated. Holy shit. His sunken eyes were as dark and hollow as those of a wild animal, but more than lamenting his failure, the group was overjoyed at his return. I see. He failed. Yep. We were back to the drawing board yet again. That was a heavy, if somewhat abstract, disappointment. I like how he... It's just like, oh, Mr. Ochi's back. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Even so, the return of our only adult male was no small relief. Eh. You hate him. Uh, not to say that our teacher's presence caused any dramatic changes in the situation. As always, we were desperately short of food. If anything, practically speaking, Mr. Ochi's return translated to nothing more than another mouth to feed. Yup, <laughs> worsening our already eager, or meager daily rations. Oh no. That evening, having entered the large tent to check up on the wounded, I noticed that Hiroka-san had quietly stopped breathing. Yep. Two weeks after Shikanai, Ozawa, and Okabe's deaths, we had our fourth casualty. Mm -hmm. Hiroka had died laying in the sleeping bag in which she'd spent the last 14 days of her life, her eyes and mouth half open. It was a gruesome sight, but there wasn't any real agitation among us. We'd all been prepared for this, even expecting it. I was no exception. Rather than grieving the death of my friend, I gazed down at the corpse in a stupor. Don't start suggesting eating. <laughs> a single thought was swirling restlessly throughout my dull mind. Don't you do it, Amine. Are we... Oh, she's doing it! She's fucking thinking it! God damn it! <clears throat> Are we going to eat this one as well? When a living thing dies, it becomes food. <laughs> Kazuki had said that was only natural. So then, her too? I wasn't the only one suspecting as much. Without a doubt. The others were thinking the same exact thing. <laughs> if Captain Shakashita or Mr. Ochi had suddenly said, All right, then let's eat her, we would probably have looked into each other's faces with reassurance, then offered tactic uh, acceptance by silence. We would have eaten our friend's corpse. At some point, all eyes had turned toward our teacher. But Mr. Ochi said only, I'll dig the grave, quietly bringing his hands together in front of Hiroka-san's corpse. Okay. We're not going to eat her? Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. As the words floated irrepressibly in, my, in the first surface of my mind, the trance finally broke, and I shivered in a shock revulsion. Shock and revulsion! What was I thinking? Of course we were going to bury her. A human being is... Eating another human being is unforgivable, no matter what. We have we must have been going a little soft in the head. We were going nuts. Right. Our friend had died and we were upset. We'd all lost our heads from shock. That's all. Our shoulders sagged to learn our stomachs would go unfilled, but all the same, we heaved sighs of relief. Whew! Okay. Without a single word of objection, we silently watched as Mr. Ochi walked down the forest to bury Hiroka's uh, remains. I'm vile. I'm vile, dis vile, disgusting excuse for a human being. That was Amine's, one of Amine's thoughts, too. She was like, are we eating this? The shame welled up so suddenly and so heavily inside me that I couldn't contain my tears. Lowering myself shakily down onto the ground, I broke into a wretched, violent sob. Well, oh no. Oh, well, I mean, like, okay, so it does go past two weeks. All right. Uh, which probably is even worse. S what if? <gasps> no, no, no theory time. I already said my theories. Let's, let's just go. The 15th day under the dome. I was awake, but I couldn't open my eyes. My head felt packed to bursting with dull, heavy lead. Every inch of my body was painfully cold and exhausted, to the point that even breathing was difficult. There wasn't a drop of saliva in my mouth, and the back of my throat burned bitterly. I couldn't even speak. This morning, Kazuki seemed to be in a similar shape. When I finally managed to force my eyelids up just a sliver, I could vaguely see her lying perfectly still on the other side of the tent, curled up like a cat. I'd always admired her strength. Wondered how she'd trained that tiny little body of hers to be so unbelievably tenacious. But it seemed that even her amazing endurance was reaching its limits. Yeah. Look, if Kazuki falls, it's done. It's over for the rest of us. No, she'd probably long since passed those limits. 
But if Kazuki were to collapse, we would have lost a large source of hope. Without her, some of us might have long since given up, stopped even trying to survive. Yup! Kazuki had been probably pushing herself unreasonably for our sake, forcing herself to appear energetic and powerful. She looked so very small now. She's fine. I hoarsely croaked out her name. There was no response. Oh, fuck me. Kazuki. No, she's fine. She'll never die. It'll be fine. My arm had grown painfully thin, but it still felt heavy as I reached out towards my friend's back. She was still warm, and I could feel her back rising and falling ever so slightly with her breathing. Okay, good. Woo! She was still alive. Oof. She's gonna be fine. My tear-filled voice finally elicited a response from Kazuki. Her tone, understandably, was exceptionally grouchy. <laughs> Kazuki! Don't even! You, pro you don't even have any meat on your bones. <laughs> Neither did Hiroka-san either, but, you know. Kazuki's words abruptly brought back the memories of Hiroka-san's death and my breath caught in my throat. <laughs> this is just getting from bad to worse and worse and worse. Surviving alone in this hell would be meaningless. Kazuki responded to my heartfelt whimpering with a sniffling little laugh. Good. She wasn't going to die just yet, but eventually that time would come. Everything living dies! Another rule of nature, the most fundamental of all. That inevitable end was no longer an abstract distant concept for us. Our debilitation had reached the final stages. One by one, we were wasting away. Oh. Oh. Sakura Senpai and Kamori san were the casualties. Uh, it's over. Sakura died from her sepsis. Kamori killed herself. Wait, what? We found her hanging from a tree? Whoa! Well, numb as we'd grown to horror, the suicide sent a dis. Disrupt, uh, <laughs> disturbed ripple through the camp. But after the initial shock had passed, we felt little more than resigned acceptance. I mean, look, she ate her dog. Everything's been going to shit. I feel like some, it'd be hard for some people to resist that urge, you know? I, I, since eating her dog's flesh, Kamari had clearly been mentally unstable and physically frail. Even before her son collapsed yesterday, we'd all seen her acting strangely. She would totter off alone in the forest and wander around calling loudly for Alione. Oh. And back at camp, she'd push her useless battery dead cell phone against her ear and hold extended conversations with her dead pet. That, alright. Everyone had vague, felt vaguely apprehensive about her bizarre behavior, but there was nothing we could do for her. When the labored breathing of a, gir of a girl sitting nearby grew faint as a whisper, the thought, ah, there's another one's dying, would pass through our minds. But we didn't feel sorrow or pity. They were just luxuries we could not, no longer afford. When Mr. Ochi carried each new corpse into the forest to bury it, the only thought we could muster was one less mouth to feed. Mm, Cold-hearted and cruel thoughts. But we no longer had even the strength to hate ourselves for him. Kanada Senpai had began to pick maggots from the wound on her head and eat them. Alright. <laughs> Consuming the fat larvae that just had gorged themselves on the flesh around her festering wound, she'd regain the meat they'd stolen from her. Or such was her theory. She'd come completely unhinged. <laughs> uh, even as I ha haze <laughs> hazily speculated, Kanada might well be the next to die. I, I don't think so. Maybe. I felt slightly envious of her. Such a total, total disconnect from reality must have been more pleasant than looking soberly into the face of death. The terror of watching your friends die one after another. The terror that you might be next. 
The escalating terror of our reality overwhelmed us, and some began to escape from it entirely. Drunk on the adrenaline, our brains secreted to numb the agonizing fear. Our thoughts lurched in bizarre, irrational directions. I don't want to die. If somebody dies in my place, maybe I'll survive. Without any logic or evidence, many had begun to believe something of the sort. That inside this ravine, one life could be traded for another. If somebody else dies, I'll live. In this claustrophobic little world where nothing enters or leaves, the total amount of well-being must be fixed. Depriving another of their happiness is the only path to survival. Such was the new dogma of the dying god. Who, who are you saying that to? Oh my god. <laughs> It is hell on earth right now. That day, the only ones with enough energy to do more than sit limply on the ground cursing were Mr. Ochi and the captain. Oh, Lord. Since Mr. Ochi's return to the, pre the previous afternoon, the two of them had made numerous trips to forge for food on behalf of those who can no longer move. They even cooked meager meals of weeds and snails, then fed them to the weakened girls. But why, why are they like the... I don't know. Maybe they are just the strongest in general. They spoke words of encouragement as they spoon-fed the feeble. Don't give up. You can't die. If those two hadn't been here, none of us would have made a past morning. The thought drove home just how useless I was in comparison, and tears welled up in my eyes. <gasps> Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I okay, I'm doing a new theory. Not really a new one. Okay. Could the reason that they are, not only because they're maybe the strongest, right, but could they have, oh, could they, the reason they're the strongest right now is because they maybe ate Roka in the forest and they went in the forest and took her up and started eating her. And... I'm so, <laughs> okay, several times since Mr. Ochi's return, the two, had been the two had even managed to capture a few animals deep in the forest. Little chunks of venison and wild hare began to appear in the standard weed soup. The girls who ate it slowly began to regain some of their vitality. Kazuki, onyku da yo. Hora, hisashiburi. That's not meat! I mean, it is meat! That's people! Oh my god! No, that's... I see... I've seen fucking movies and games and shit. I know what's happening. They're saying it's fucking deer and shit. But it's not. It's not. It's people. Oh, I'm disgusted with myself. Does Kazuki sense it? Kazuki, my girl. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, he might, she's, she might be right. It's people! And because of this, Amine's not gonna eat it! Oh my god. Uh, by now, Captain Shakachina and Mr. Ochi were gathering the majority of the group's food. And Kazuki, whose son de 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 debilitation de was so intense, she had difficulty standing, had quickly and utterly lost the status she had gained among us since the fall. Everyone worshipped the captain like a god for providing food. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, you know what that food is? <laughs> and despite all the, that Kazuki has done for us up until now, no one exposed worry about her condition. Far from it. They... The looks they gave her clearly read, hurry up and die. Well, fuck you guys. Maybe she was resistant to the idea of accepting the Ascendant Captain's charity. Whatever the case, Kazuki absolutely refused to eat the mead her rival brought back from the forest. Idiotic pride for someone at death's door. But as irritated as I was, I couldn't betray or disobey Kazuki. I bitterly gave up our share of the meat, offering it to those who were worse off. <gasps> she didn't eat the meat! It's people! It's made out of people! 
uh, that night, I would come to understand that I made the correct choice in doing so! I knew it! <laughs> I'm... <laughs> Wait, it's not confirmed yet. Hold on. <laughs> A little before dawn, I woke up to the rustling sound of someone moving around in the tent. Sluggishly forcing open my eyelids, I strained to see what was going on. Amane, okinasai. Oh, lordy lord. I'm waking up. Hold on. Kazuki. Oh, it's all going downhill, isn't it? Kazuki had rolled up her sleeping bag and packed all her belongings in the rucksack she'd normally used as a pillow. Uh, one hand clutching my shoulder, she slowly shook me awake. <laughs> Oh god, Kazuki's gonna be like, we getting the fuck out right now. Still half asleep, I spoke more loudly than I had intended. Kazuki quickly drew a forefinger to my mouth and whispered to a brief shh. Uh, I don't want to look at anything. Kazuki lifted the flap of the tent slightly open, and I peered through to see the captain and Mr. Ochi walking off together in the dark forest. Uh huh. <laughs> They're getting more people! Or whatever. She means get the fuck out! <laughs><笑> She's gonna be. I feel like she's gonna be like these people are beyond saving. Let's just fucking save ourselves. I didn't understand what she was talking about. The words were clear enough, but the meaning just couldn't register. Because if we don't, we gonna die. Kazuki fixed a deadly, serious gaze directly on my eyes, and I faltered to a halt. Alright. Uh, ghouls? What? Oh, Kazuki already knew what was happening! Mother of God, get out! Let's leave! <laughs> to be honest, I didn't have the first idea about what was going on. But Kazuki was never wrong. If Kazuki told me to get the fuck out, I would get the fuck out. That's simply, that simple faith guy has guided me until now. I stuffed my possessions into the rucksack as quickly as I could in the dim tent, barely waiting for me to finish. Kazuki impatiently grabbed my hand and pulled me along, quickly and quietly leading me out of the camp. Alright, let's get out. Kazuki, where are you going? How about you don't show me and just we get out? I don't want to see anything! <laughs> I guess. Not like we have the strength to speak. Just what was she planning to show me? I don't know! I don't want to know! <laughs> Clueless but obedient, I passively followed Kazuki down the valley and into the forest. Uh-huh. We were retracing the steps of Mr. Ochi and Captain Shakshida. For some reason, the, that realization filled me with dread. Some instinct was whispering faintly, Don't go any further. Don't take another step. Some truths are best left unseen. My, my skin tingled as though all the pores of my body had suddenly opened wide. With every step, my heartbeat grew louder in my ears. Cold, sticky sweat settled unpleasantly in my armpits. Ooh. Oh no, are they like gathering the people? Or they could be fucking, just just for my shitty theory earlier that they just going in the forest to do that. That'd be pretty stupid. Not not like stupid as in, like, I get it. <laughs> but you know, what if they're doing both? 
I, 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 listen, I just gotta keep playing the game. Whispering so softly, I could barely hear her over the cries of the cicadas. Kazuki pointed through a thicket to the clearing beyond. Captain Shakshida and Mr. Ochi were inside, completely naked, making violent love like a pair of beasts! Ah! <sighs> okay. I did not... Okay, well, I mean, maybe they're just going crazy now. Oh, it actually is going to show it, isn't it? No, oh, I don't know. I should probably censor that, so... I'm going to censor most of it, but it's not pleasant. Uh, <laughs> illuminated by the faint moonlight that slipped through the cracks in the tree canopy, the captain's white skin shone visit vividly in the darkness. In their frenzy, they had yielded and utterly to the base instinct for survival, the impulse to preserve their genes. That's what I was talking about! When I brought, first brought it up, I was like, maybe they're going in because, you know, you, you, you just have that instinct, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> reveling in her obedience on that animal instinct, the captain screamed with crazed pleasure. All right, digging her fingernail fi fi fingernails into Shakashita's pale skin, Mr. Ochi slammed his waist against her, slobber dribbling from his mouth with every thrust. Well, uh, all right. <laughs> all right. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I removed my glasses, carefully wiped the lenses with the cuff of my uniform, then put them back on. As the scene came into clear focus, I finally noticed, lying in the grass around them, were the scattered fragments of a truth. <gasps> Better left unseen. It's the... Oh, Jesus. Oh, is that an arm? Yup, that's, that's the body parts. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Ah, I, was, I was right. I didn't want to be right, but I was right about everything. I hate myself. At first glance, the objects lying there and here and there amid the pair's clothes looked almost like oversized radishes. Uh, in the faint light, it took a moment for me to realize that the long, white, slender vegetables were the dis dissected limbs of human beings. Oh, yeah, I don't want to see that. Oh, Hamane, shut the fuck up! <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't contain my shriek, and before I had time to regret that mistake, tears were pouring out of my eyes. Bile was rising in my throat, and I was stumbling backward, fa falling to the ground. Oh! Oh, my God. <laughs> My hands quivered at the vicious shout, but I simply couldn't stand. My legs had turned to rubber. My eyes were fixed, unblinking on the scene before me. The face of Mr. Ochi glaring in the direction with eyes like a demon's, and the mutilated body that lay in chunks around the clearing. The silver bracelet was wrapped around one of the dismembered arms. <gasps> it was Komori. Oh no, because she put that when uh, the dog died. Even in the dim moonlight, the word Alion was clearly visible on its plate. Yup. That was Akun's collar. When the dog wasted away and died, Komori had coiled it around her wrist. Yup. Which had to mean that arm was hers. Oh my god. The meat everyone had eaten was people! Oh god. Thank God we didn't eat that shit. Ooh. You're not being quiet, Omni. A burning tide of gastrous juices surged up my throat as I noisily vomited on the ground. Kanzuki grabbed me by the shoulder with a flat. We're going to run now. She forcibly dragged me to my feet. Disoriented, the taste of acid thick in my mouth, I let Kanzuki pull me into a run. From behind, I heard the captain's snarling voice. Uh-huh. Yes. Ow! With that, we were of <laughs> that with it. That voice, uh, the voice that had encouraged me during practice, firm but kind. Good hustle out there. The voice that had offered all, us all reassurance as she distributed the food. Don't give up. Captain Shakshita's voice was now. Uh, we get now, so get wrecked, loser. The voice of a ghoul. Quote quote. This couldn't. B, this had to be a dream. Why wasn't I waking up? This absolutely couldn't be real. 
As these thoughts swirled through my dazed mind, Kazuki hissed into my ear as if to slap me awake. Yup, it's happening! It's happening! Yup, they're not people anymore! That's... Oh, you won't? You said you wouldn't leave us behind! And that you'd... <gasps> Never mind. I clung tightly to Kazuki like a little girl terrified of being left behind by her mother. Except way worse now. There was nothing but to do but run! The things chasing us were now monsters. Demons that feasted on human lives. If I were to succumb to the pull of madness and fall to the ground, my life would end. For now, I could only clutch Kazuki's hand and run. Into the dark heart of the forest, where the light of the stars can betray us. Uh. Suddenly, Kazuki raised her hand and barked a command. As I came to a halt, something moved slightly in the corner of my eye. A black shadow slowly emerged, uh-oh, as if oozing out of the darkness ahead. Yeah. Uh, I don't trust any of you. You all ate people! Uh, Omne, shut the fuck up and just run! Don't stop, keep running! Halfway through my gaze, or sentence, brain, <laughs> I, I noticed something odd about Sakuma's glassy gaze. Her eyes were focused on the rucksacks we were carrying, and her swollen face betrayed not surprise but suspicion. Yep, we're getting out! <laughs> Sakuma furrowed her brow at Kazuki's words. Oh. <laughs> We can't smooth shit over. It's it's done so. It's all over for everything. Set the force on fire. <laughs> Destroy all of them. She needs to get it together, man. I get it. Kazuki seized my backpack and practically forced me into a run. Oh! Honestly, I couldn't tell my left from my right at that moment, but Kazuki's grip stayed firm, and we plunged into a short thicket, pushing our way through the gas grasping uh, branches toward escape. Uh, Sakuma didn't pursue us. Instead, she spoke, spoke a few words. Her voice was like a whisper, but somehow it found its way all too clearly to my ears. <laughs> Sakuma Senpai had known? Duh! She had known what Sa Sakashita and Ochi were doing. She had known that what the meat was. She had known everything and kept her silence. It's like, stop with the fucking questions! ところで誰にも止められない。こうなるのは必然だったのよ。そう、そう。いいやまね。ここにいるのはもう人間じゃない。動物よ。ライオンにシマウマが食べられるのは当たり前のこと。そのことでシマウマは怒ったりしないし、
弱い者がいてそれを強い者が食べる生き残るために食べるそれがルールなのよ Yep, no longer civilized, no longer nothing anymore. It's just straight basic survival instinct at this point. But where? Human beings. In order for people to live as human beings, three basic rules need to be respected. Don't steal. Done. Don't destroy. Also done. And don't kill. That's out the window. When even one collapses, when breaking it becomes natural, It's only a matter of time until the other two give way. Yup, it all started. It all started with that. And when it comes to that, no one can stop the downhill slide. When people fall below the absolute minimum standard of humanity, they revert to a simpler, more primitive set of rules. The strong eat the weak, the law of the jungle. Well, I mean, we don't have fucking time for this! Kazuki quickly held her hand against my mouth, but the unbelievably cruel reality was beyond my capacity to endure. It was far too sudden and far, far too strong a dose. I had to scream. If I didn't scream, the terror would tear me apart from the inside. No! Shut the fuck up! We'd been pushing our way through bushes and strands of trees to keep hidden from our pursuers. There was no point if I was broadcasting our location. Kazuki pushed her hand firmly down, finally stifling my muffled shriek and turned to face me. In the faint pre-dawn light, the whites of Kazuki's unblinking eyes stood out powerfully against her mud-stained face. It was the harsh glare of a father dragged out of bed by a bawling toddler. Staring it back into those steady eyes, I drew clipped, trembled breaths through my nose. In time, my cries faded against her palm. Oh, no. I think I know what Kazuki's gonna do. <laughs> My throat was continuing to spasm convulsively, possibly because I stopped crying so suddenly. But despite everything else, the feeling of Kazuki's hand squeezing mine tightly was genuinely reassuring. Shh! Uh, Kanada's voice rang out in the darkness. Yeah, because we're just gonna pop out and be like, hey, okay, we can talk this over. <laughs> from the volume of her voice, she was no more than 20 or 30 meters away from the thicket where we were crouched hidden. I looked back at Kazuki's face and spoke in a whisper. I feel like they all knew. Does that mean so Koide also? Too? Maybe? I guess. I guess the I guess the remainder all knew about people. Maybe. I don't know. Seems like it. The footsteps of the ghouls approached us from behind. If they caught us, that would they kill us immediately? Or make us one of them? Even in the latter case, we wouldn't stay allies for very long. Nope. Oh, it was all too clear that these creatures would kill without a second thought to preserve their own lives. There were many feet stepping through the mud, many branches snapping in the darkness behind us. Engulfed in the madness that had spread from Ochi and Shakashita, the others had abandoned themselves to the final rule and became corpse-eaters. Demons. Reason and morality no longer had any meaning to them. In the end, nobody wants to die. Get mm. <laughs> just just get out. We fought our way forward through the soft, slushy mulch of decayed leaves, desperately climbing the slope before us. We, my feet sank deeply into the mud, muddy soil, my legs trembling from malnutrition, tangled awkwardly with every stride. Oh, fuck, it's over. Our pursuer's eyes glistened in the darkness like pools of oil. Those eyes be 
betrayed no hatred, no anger. They weren't the eyes of people looking at their enemy. They were the eyes of beasts that knew no emotion but hunger. They were looking at their prey. If they catch us, they're going to eat us on the spot. That's what I've assumed. Uh, the terror paralyzed my brain, and even focused. The slope would have been difficult to climb. My leg caught in a muddy patch of leaves, and I tumbled down onto the ground. Oh, fuck. So you have to get up now! My hand shaking pathetically, I lowered my rucksack to the ground, then took out a kitchen knife carefully wrapped in newspaper. Uh oh. <laughs> Or, new plan. Here's what we do. We we start stabbing them. <laughs> uh, okay, but she is talking. Let's not, Omni, um, please. The ghouls would swarm around my corpse like a pride of lines after the, cure, the first kill. That distraction would at least enable Kazuki to escape. I unwrapped the stainless steel knife from the newspaper with trembling hands, but at the sight of the shining blade, my mind froze with dread. If I stab my neck with this, will I die instantly? Uh, no, probably not. I bet it's going to hurt. Oh god, I don't want it to hurt. But as my hands continued their relentless, terrified trembling, Kazuki knelt down beside me and gently wrapped them in her own. Oh. <gasps> Kazuki, no! She is gonna do it! She's going to do the ultimate sacrifice! <laughs> Before I knew it, Kazuki had smoothly taken the knife from my hand. I was the one who couldn't move. I was the one who'd given up. Why should Kazuki be the one to do this for my sake? She made a promise. Uh, it made no sense. <laughs> Holding the knife in an underhand grip, Kazuki lowered a rucksack from her bag and pressed it against my chest. She fucking knew this would happen. Or had the possibility that it could happen. Kazuki reached into the pocket of her skirt and took out a few sheets of paper from a memo pad. Uh, oh, Jesus. No, she's making the ultimate sacrifice right now. That hit. You know what? I choose to believe her! Uh. <laughs> we don't have time for this right now! <laughs> いいから、行きなさい。私を誰だと思っているの私に従っていれば何も心配はないわ。ほら、立って走るのよ。カズキ、カズキ。絶対に振り返ってはダメよ。ほら、急いで走りなさい。Holy shit. 
They say that a person's true nature is revealed only when their back's against the wall. I abandoned Kazuki to save my own skin. No, she did this. This was her. The, like, you know? Leaving her as a decoy, leaving her to be eaten. I moved my legs furiously, desperate to gain every centimeter of safety I could. There was no doubt in my mind she would die. She would die slowly, in agony, eaten alive by demons in human form. Kazuki would be the sacrifice, and one cowardly worthless girl would survive a little longer. I was overflowing with guilt. Bitter tears of shame rolled endlessly down my face. Even if I got away, even if I returned alive, this unbearable self-loathing would crush me under its weight. With every step I took, that conviction grew stronger. My legs were leaden, le lead underneath me. No! She's gonna be fine! She told us she'll not die here! You absolutely mustn't turn back. She had told me clearly enough, but just once, at the end, I stopped and I looked back. Oh, the demons had gathered. The beams from their flashlights dancing through the trees, and at the center of their circle, Koski was lying on the ground, pinned by the ghouls that had been our friends. No! The last time I saw her face, Koski wasn't crying. She wasn't screaming. She wasn't glaring resentfully. She was smiling. She smiled as if to say this was fate. As if to say this was the rule. As if to say it was nothing worth troubling myself over. If Kazuki had screamed for help, if she'd cursed me, called me a traitor, I might never move from that spot. I might have run back and fought. But Kazuki quietly, peacefully gazed into my eyes, accepting her fate. Her words flooded into my mind. Uh... I stopped looking back. I turned my back on her for the last time, and I ran chanting, forgive me, in my mind like a mantra. <laughs> now hold on! Hold on there! I don't... She could get out somehow! God damn it. Uh, as the sky grew light with the dawn, I ran desperately, not knowing where my feet were carrying me. I simply fled, pushing through the forest in a frenzy, as if to escape my own terror and guilt. Ugh. We don't even know the day anymore. Fuck it. Doesn't even matter. Holy shit. Uh. 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 Kazuki. Okay, hold on. All of my theories were correct. But! Uh. <laughs> and I, I just, she was gonna make the, she made the ultimate sacrifice, but she said she wasn't going to die here, and I believe her. I don't know how she's gonna get out. I don't know how or why or what, but I don't think she's gonna be eaten. I think she's gonna get out somehow, some way. I don't know, something in my gut keeps telling me, even after seeing that scene, where it lit where she was literally surrounded by these fucks and in being pinned down by them as well. I still think she's gonna be fine. I don't know it you know it's one of those weird things, those uh those irrational things that you know, like you know you should probably think otherwise, right? But in my head, I just can't stop thinking that she is actually going to live. It's just... <sighs> We're going to keep going. Uh, how many days had passed since then? I didn't exactly have the leisure time or composure to write a daily diary. Uh, a daily entry in my diary, but I think it had been five nights. Five nights spent restlessly, mindlessly marching forward through the jungle. Following the instructions Kazuki had written in her note, I walked only in by darkness in order to hide my movements from the ghouls. When the sun rose, I hid myself in bushes and tried to sleep. This lasted a few hours at most, and when I woke up from these brief periods of rest, the first order of business was to always peel the leeches off that covered my body, then throw the fat blood suckers into my mouth, crush them with my teeth, and force them down my throat. Yeah, eat them! <laughs> Koski's rucksack contains a small hoard of various snacks and sweets, her secret treasure. Aw, oh, is that... She's... Did she, is she the one that stole the fucking carrot, too? 
Just as I thought, she'd stolen fruit from Ozawa's belongings on the first day, then carefully stashed it away. Since escaping, I hadn't touched those precious snacks, not even once. If Kazuki were to somehow escape her captors and catch up with me, I intended to give it all back to her. There was real food just inside that bag. The temptation was overwhelmingly powerful. But if I were to yield to my hunger and greedily devour Kazuki's treasure, I'd be admitting I was fundamentally no different from the ravenous ghouls. I couldn't bring myself to do it. No, it's fine. When the forest was dry enough to light a fire, I boiled fern sprouts and... I don't even know what that is for my meals. My starvation and exhaustion was now complemented by constant horror and terror of the demons that were no doubt pursuing me. My hair had begun to fall out in bunches. I, too, had been pushed well beyond my limit, and I was about ready to break. You can! You see, even so, Kazuki said saved my life. I couldn't allow that to become meaningless. I couldn't just give up. During the daylight hours, I simply laid still and hidden, hidden, hidden in the bushes, unable to sleep but preserving my energy as best I could. When the day grew dark, I would crawl ca cautiously out of the undergrowth and begin the astronomical observation described in Kotsky's notes. The lush canopy of the trees above hid much of the sky, rendering it difficult to determine the location of the stars. And as in any forest, the orientating uh, line of the horizon was unclear. I might uh, well have been able to get a better view by climbing on one of the taller trees, but I no longer had the strength to do such a thing. Yep, then not an option. Just how far had I walked? Walking meant pushing my way through lush weeds and wild grasses, struggling through thick brushes and bushes that obstructed my path. The distance I moved in a, any given day didn't amount to much. After one full night's work of hiking through the jungle, I turned back to see if I could get some idea of my progress, only to find that the ridge I'd been standing on last night was still visible. I could feel my willpower shriveling inside me. Deciding I could urge myself no further that day, I collapsed on the spot, hugging Kazuki's rucksack tightly to my body. Her scent had permeated through the, the tough fabric, and when I slept, she appeared in my dreams. Mm. In those dreams, Kazuki said nothing. She stood about twenty paces ahead, silently looking over her shoulder, staring into my eyes. I screamed her name and tried to step forward, but it was frustratingly difficult to move. I shoved my way through thick weeds, my feet sinking into thick mud with every step, ignoring the branches cutting at my cheeks. But no longer how desperately I forced myself forward, Kazuki moved away at the same speed. Oh? Oh, well, I couldn't catch up with her no matter how hard I tried. When I gave up I, uh, and sagged to a halt, Kazuki stopped as well. Again, she gazed back into my eyes. What on earth are you doing all the way back there? She never spoke, but her expression conveyed the words clearly enough. Kazuki. I woke at the sound of my own sleep talking. I was no longer dreaming of food these last few days. I had come to realize that I wanted more than anything else in the world. What I wanted was no, no longer food or drink. <laughs> It was Kazami Kazuki, occupation student. <clears throat> and once again, I walked through the night. As I dragged my heavy legs forward, exhausted and starving, Kazuki came into view a, a little ways away. She strode slowly ahead towards the forest, her back turned toward me. No. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> Kazuki. <laughs> And I pursued her. I could, uh, 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 and as I pursued her, I could see many others further beyond. Vaguely defined fi figures walked the same path as Kazuki, flickering and melting into each other. All wore a familiar school uniform. Even in the darkness, I knew them. <gasps> yup, that one had to be Hiroka. And that one further on, I could see Sakurai. Many others as well. Shikanai, Ozawa, Akabe. Alion, frolicking around Komori's feet. The ones who had already died walked among the trees, shimmering hazily in the light that night. Ah. They looked over their shoulders one by one and spoke this way. And I, I finally started hallucinating. Guess I'll just be following them now. Have them guide me to heaven. <laughs> no, 
will it really be heaven? Well, I've been in hell until now. If they're taking me somewhere else, it's probably heaven, right? Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna lead you somewhere. <laughs> I can no longer lift my legs. The world grew cloudy before my eyes. A heavy, leaden drowsiness assaulted my mind. Even where I was, what I was doing had begun to grow fuzzy. Oh, Jesus! With the thought, uh, I guess this is as far as I can go. I fell hard to my knees, then pitched forward onto the cold earth. Oh. As I pressed my face into the ground, my ears began to ring. Huh? A fairly common phenomenon before passing out. It's something like the sound of your own baseline brainwaves. Uh, faint here, and the leeches are going to be all over me again. But as the thought ran vaguely through my wobbling head, my ears picked up a noise clearly distinct from that high-pitched tone. What the fuck? What? What's that sound? <laughs> I focused my mind on that strange noise and decided it sounded almost like a car running on an unpaved road! Specifically, the sound of tires rolling through gravel. That's not what it sounded like to me! <laughs> Sound like an avalanche, <laughs> and mixed in with the cr that crunching white noise, there was something like the weak whining of a three-cylinder engine. Ah, sounds just like a mini truck. Have heaven sent somebody out to greet me? Are angels these days in the habit of picking up the dead in cute little pickups? <laughs> Fucking Amine. When the sound passed, the ringing in my ears it was gone as well. Once more, I pulled my ragged body off the ground. Once more, I forced myself upright, my weary legs trembling with the effort. Are we alive? Are we good? Are we safe? I hadn't realized during the night, but apparently at some point I draw near a road. A real honest-to-God road. A path human beings traveled. Beyond the thick rows of trees, through the wet, cold dawn air of the forest, I could see the gravelly track stretched out below. This isn't a hallucination, right? Incredulous as I was, I didn't take the time to pitch my cheeks. Pinch my cheek, not pitch them. Half sliding down the muddy slope, I made my way toward the road that lay before me. Get there! The sky? Oh my god. It wasn't paved, it wasn't well maintained, but without a doubt, it was a road surfaced by human hands traveled by human vehicles my mind whirling i began to walk unsteadily down the road in the direction i thought the truck had been headed and before long i found myself in front of a vast field extending as far as the eye could see it was full of thousands and thousands of cabbage you start eating them I didn't scream with joy at the sight. Without a word, I drew a few slow, shuddering breaths, then plunged into the field, ripping the nearest cabbage from the ground. Yes! <laughs> I sunk my teeth into it ferociously in a frenzy. Not bothering to chew, I ate. Fucking just... My first thought wasn't, I'm saved. It wasn't, I can finally go home. There was only one thing in my mind, eating the cabbages in front of me, yup. Without a drop of seasoning or even a sprinkle of salt, those cabbages were so delicious, my eyes rolled back in my head from sheer ecstasy. That's some homegrown shit, too. Oh, God, what? And I ate and ate, deliriously, frantically, as if possessed. Crack cackling madly, I ate, laughing in between the sporadic, uh, whimpers that seized my throat, tears pouring down my face, I ate. It was 30 minutes before the farmer's housewife noticed something single-mindedly ripping through the cabbage field like a crazed wild animal. When she ran to tell her husband about the bizarre creature devouring the crops, 
He ran out with his hunting rifle, only to find a human being. It was another 30 minutes before the ambulance he called arrived. And lying in my hospital bed, I finally told the local police officers who I was. That I'd been on a bus uh, that had gone missing nearly three weeks before. And so, at the cost of many terrible sacrifices, one pathetic girl crawled her way back to the human world alive. Mm. Oh my god. <gasps> God! Holy shit! We need like a palate cleanser now! Yuji's back! He's fucking back! Uh, I'm just gonna like lay here on my desk for a little bit and just, just fucking chill, man. I need to decompress after that. Fucking holy shit. That was insane. But again, I still think Kazuki is somehow up and running. I don't know how, but it's just something that's telling me, Yuji, I missed you. Come here, come here, give me a hug, Yuji. No, fuck you. Give me, come here, give me a hug. I just, I need to hug you. Let me, let me nuzzle my face in his chest. <laughs> and be like, I've been far away, Yuji. It's okay. It's okay, I'm here now. I'm so very...